The DC Blacks are one of the most dangerous federal prison gangs in history. So let's talk about it. Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Shout out to all the law abiding criminals out there. As always, you know what to do. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to hear more prison stories, learn how the politics and things inside prison work, go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today is going to be all about the DC Blacks. I've been getting this request quite a lot from some of my subscribers, and I'm here today to fill you guys in on exactly who they are, where they're from, and what they're about. First and foremost, as you can tell from what they're called the DC Blacks, this is a group of African American men, and they are from the Washington, D.C. area. Mostly they are actually going to be from D.C., but from what I have seen in federal prison, guys from the surrounding areas also will roll with them. Now, first and foremost, we're going to get right into their reputation because everybody has heard it. If you've ever done time in the feds, it's the first thing that you hear always is that the D.C. blacks are about raping or about being gay, all that kind of stuff, but also just not being gay and about being raping and things, but being extremely very dangerous and always having a knife, shank, shiv, whatever you want to call it, on their person and ready to use it at the drop of a dime. Like I've said in one of my previous videos, I have noticed that the younger guys that are coming through the system now from D.C. are not so much about that gay stuff. Yes, it does still happen, but it happens everywhere from all states, from all cars, from all races. It goes down that way into prison sometimes. But yes, the DC car does have a notorious reputation for being on booty. And from what I can gather, it all comes from the history and the reputation of something called the Lorton Prison. This is the prison that used to house all the DC inmates. It was built way back in the early 1900s and was actually built by the inmates. So a lot of inmate labor went into building this place. And as you can see, it is a large, huge prison. It had a bed capacity of almost 4,000 inmates and it's placed on a huge farm. This is out in Virginia. Fairfax County to be exact. The DC inmates were housed there up until the year of 1997 whenever a bill was introduced to transfer all of them over to the FBOP which is the Federal Bureau of Prisons and that is why now to this day you hear and you see that anybody that commits a crime in DC no matter what it is it's federal you're gonna go and you're gonna get housed in the feds. Now you are not under the federal guidelines because you didn't catch a federal case you still are under Washington, D.C. state guidelines, but you're housed, facilitated, moved around within the FBOP. As a side note, one very notable prisoner that did time at the Lorton Prison was Rafel Edmond. If you don't know who he is, you can go and check him out. He was a very large drug kingpin, excuse me, meaning large in the amount of drugs that he had. He went down for a 150 kilo conspiracy and also one and a half kilos of crack cocaine. He was from the Washington, D.C. area as well. So the reputation of the D.C. Blacks largely comes from the Lorton Prison. It was an old prison. It was a very violent place. A lot of murders happened, a lot of robberies happen and obviously a lot of rapes happen at this place. Moving right along, the DC Blacks pretty much align themselves with the BGF, which is the Black Gorilla family. They will frequently align themselves with pretty much any other African American gang if bigger things pop off. And as you well may know, their biggest rivalry is the AB, the Aryan Brotherhood, also known as the Brand, which is a white gang. The DC Blacks make up the largest ethnic group in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, comprising 10% of the population. Now that is according to Wikipedia. Whether that is actually true, I cannot tell you. I've thought about that, tried to wrap my head around it. Maybe they're right, I don't know, but that is what Wikipedia said. Now, the DC Blacks were said to originate around the 60s or possibly even the early 70s, and it just seems like nobody really knows how they came about. They don't really have a structure like a regular gang does. There's no soldiers or lieutenants or anything like that. They do have shot callers at certain prisons, you know, that will call the shots in a dorm or call the shots for the whole yard just to keep up the politics and to keep the peace on the yard. But as we spoke about before, the reputation of these guys also is towards the violence. They are very well known for being able to push the blade. They get busy. They go super hard. And it's very known in the federal prison that if you get a big shipment of guys from D.C. on the yard, you got some problems and you got something to worry about. Nobody wants to hear that 20, 30, 40 guys from D.C. are getting off the bus on intake day. According to a former inmate named Eddie Griffin, 
This guy was quoted as saying that the DC blacks were very well schooled in the science of killing and being able to get rid of weapons. He went on to say that these guys could kill you, get rid of a weapon all in the space of 60 seconds and nobody would ever know what happened. What the DC blacks are most well known for is their rivalry with the AB, which started in the 80s, kicked off again in the 90s, and I will be making some subsequent videos to cover that because it is very interesting it is it was very bloody there was a lot of killing going on that started in the federal penitentiaries and it's a large part of the history of these two gangs and just to give you a little bit of a teaser the war all started with the ABs because two guys that were well respected in the DC black car were murdered by the Aryan Brotherhood. Now this happened at the United States Penitentiary in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Also of note is that the DC black car is widely known for driving most of the violence that was happening in the federal penitentiaries through the 80s, 90s, and into the early 2000s. This group is very vicious and they are very, very dangerous. Now no video will be complete without saying my own personal experience with the DC Blacks. I know that you guys were probably looking for some war stories with them, but the bottom line is they did not do anything at the yard that I was on. They were there. I interacted with some of them before, but they did not have any large incidents at my yard. Now, the only huge incident that happened with the African Americans, period, is the video that I've already covered which was the Pisces. And yes, from what I heard, the DC guys did put in some work out there in that incident. But other than that, they never did anything in my yard. So I don't have those war stories to tell. But I can tell you my personal experience and how I observed those guys. And then tomorrow, I'm going to be dropping that video of the war between them and the Aryan Brotherhood. So my personal experience with these guys, number one thing that you will notice, because I am from the South. I am from the land of guys who talk really country, slur their speech a lot, sag their pants, and the DC guys are a world different than that. A lot of those guys are eloquent with the way that they speak. They do not slur their words. They wear their pants up on their waist, and a lot of times, I don't know if that's an actual thing with them or not, but they will wear their shirt buttoned all the way up to the top like this. I don't know why that is, and no, I'm not trying to make any comparisons between any groups. I'm just telling you the facts and the way it is. Guys from the South sag their pants, show their ass. Guys from D.C. do not do that. It has been said that if a D.C. guy sees you with your butt hanging out, that he'll pop you on it and ask you what's up with it because you're putting it on display. Now, I've never personally seen that happen, but I have heard guys tell those kinds of stories before. And knowing their reputation for violence and being trained to go at any given moment, it's probably true. The couple of guys that I did know that were in my unit that I would speak to from time to time, yes, they always had a blade on them. This I know. I saw one guy drop his in the laundry room one day, so I know that that part is also true. Maybe the way that they dress has something to do with that. The fact that they always have to conceal a weapon might have something to do with the reason why they dress that way. One of the most well-known DC Blacks was a guy named Raymond Cadillac Williams. I will be covering him in tomorrow's video because he has a huge role in the stuff between the ABs and the DC Blacks. Like I said before, they don't have your normal gang structure, so there's not been any like you know, national shot callers or anything like that. Not that I've ever heard of and not that I can find online either. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the history of where they come from, where they used to be housed, where they're housed now, why you always hear that anything you do in D.C. is fed. It's not actually fed, but what it is is they just get housed out by the feds. And we touched a little on their reputation, how they carry their self, just in general, how they move as a car. I hope you guys enjoyed the content, and I hope that you're looking forward to tomorrow's video, which is going to be gruesome. That story is bloody and violent, and I hope that you guys will enjoy it. Until next time.